Okay, so Remnote in its latest update launched tables. This update really caught my eye and I think is amazing. Here's why. Take a look at this geography table. So you can organize a load of related information together about countries, their capitals, and so on. And these tables function a lot like Notion. So you can have columns that are like select, multi-select, dates, numbers, and so on. So it's got the same level of functionality almost. But the amazing thing about Remnote is its integration with flashcards. So once I have this information in a table, I can easily generate flashcards automatically and then go and study them. And you see here it's asking me what the currency of Moldova is. Liu. Cool. What's the currency of Portugal? I think it's the euro. Cool. So I think this is really amazing because it, there are times and there are sets of information where tables really help structure this knowledge and to be able to create flashcards automatically from it is super amazing. So I'm going to dive in and to show you how I create this table and how you can play around with some of the properties and the, the features of it in this video. It's the basics. We'll dive in. Let's go. So I've organized uh, my sidebar with a folder of table flashcards demo. So what I'm going to do is to get started is just create a new document under that folder. And I'm going to call it geography YouTube. So we know it's the example. So I will point out here that this feature, um, you can have one table for free, but then you will need the pro plan, which is kind of annoying. Um, but if you are an avid Remnote user, you're probably watching this video or you may be converted by the power of this. Um, so what you'll want to do is do forward slash uh, insert table view. And there's a couple of options, but you will create a new table and tag. The tag thing is a little bit confusing, but you eventually get it. But what I'm basically going to call it is geography YT for YouTube. You can just call it geography or whatever you want to call it. So what you'll see here is we've got now an empty table. It looks super like Excel, Notion, and so on. But I'm going to start filling out my geography related information. So what am I going to want as my main column? I'm going to want the country. So let's go with Albania, Andorra. I'm just going with European countries here. And then there's various bits of information that I want to well, store here, but also memorize. And so the first property I'm going to put in is currency, uh, the capital and the continent and the flag. And so by default, I think all of these properties are text-based. Um, which for a lot of these, that's good. So the currency of Albania is the lek. Whoops. The currency of Andorra, I believe, is the euro. I can double check that later. Capital, Tirana. Capital, Andorra, La Vela. Now, for the continent, we know that there's only like a limited, discrete set of choices here, the seven. Um, so much like Notion, you'll see as a property type. And you can do checkboxes, dates, selects. And what we want in this instance is a single select. And so when I start filling that out, we know that that's part of Europe. That is also part of Europe. You can start to get the gist of um, how you can organize properties to your advantage. Same thing with the flag. So I'll actually want to do an image here, which it has a property type for that. And once you do that, you can just basically it automatically creates an add image option. The one interesting thing is that it only takes image URLs, um, which, you know, for flags and things, you know, that's readily available on the internet, but maybe if you have your own images for certain things, it might be a pain that you can't just upload your own images. Um, but maybe that's something that they're developing. Anyway, I've preloaded the Albania flag just to show you. I insert that link and then it kind of shoves in automatically the image of the flag. Um, I won't bother with the second one because you get the gist. Now, that's kind of gone through the properties or columns, if you will, of a table. Again, it's much like Notion if you've come across this. But here's the next level thing that Remno offers you, which is flashcards. So on each column or property, 
as they should call it, there's this button here for generate flashcards from this column. Now, if you click that, you then get a few options, which for those who are familiar with flashcards, this may be intuitive to you, but I'll quickly explain that basically two ways, I mean, it visually explains it here actually, um, two ways saying you wanna see uh, the front and then answer the back, but then you also wanna be shown the back and answer the front. So in this case, you're shown on Dora, what's the, what's the currency? Um, vice versa, you're shown the currency, what's the country? That's a bad example because actually you only want to do it forward because you want to know what's the currency of Andorra. You don't want to say the currency is Euro, what's the country, because there's multiple countries. It's a one-to-many mapping. So we'll use a forward-based card for that. However, the capital, that makes sense for a two-way flashcard. So I'll click that. Boom. The entire columns, you know, if you had 50 rows or 100 rows, by pressing that button, you've automatically created 50 flashcards uh, two-way with a click of a button. So really, really cool stuff. Um, the continent I would also do as a forward flashcard. And then interestingly, I would use the backward flashcard for, a, for this flag image. You wanna see the image of the flag and then be asked what the country is. So that, in you've seen in there a couple of minutes, we've produced a table, we've produced a lot of flashcards of different pieces on um, facts of information. And then you'll see at the top right, I can basically study all of this and say, okay, oh, it's asking me what, what has the capital of Tirana? It's Albania and so on. Super amazing. I mean, this is a beyond the scope of this video for now, but there's the flashcards home, which is also a recent update. But basically you'll see any page or document within RemNote that has flashcards, it will show up in your flashcard home. So if you ever want to just focus on flashcards for the day, you go to your flashcard home, you come here and you find your page that I want to study geography YouTube document, and it will give you some information about how many is due and, and how you can practice them and so on. But before I kind of finish this video, there's a couple of extra features I want to show through. Okay, so the other thing that is cool you can do, and this is akin to the power of Anki, which is you wanna maybe configure your cards to show other useful bits of information on the front or the back that's kind of a bit more custom. So a perfect example of this is for the cards about the capital city, you might want to say, add some extra information to the front side. So when you're getting shown Andorra and you're asked what the capital is, it might be useful just to build your association it's not only to show Andorra, but show Andorra and the flag when you're being asked about the capital city. So what you can do is you click this drop down, and you'll say configure cards and you can say extra properties on the front of the card and extra properties on the back of the card. So as we were saying, we want to have the flag on the front to kind of build that pictorial association of Andorra looks like this. So I'm going to click that and that should work. And then if I study them now, you'll see here that it's now asking about Albania and what the capital is. So that's how it was before, but it's giving you this extra information about what Albania looks like. So that's a really simple example, but you know, you can imagine some more complex uh, mechanisms that you want to create for adding extra information. So that's really cool. Final feature that I want to go through for this beginner introduction to tables is <clears throat> the ability to filter. So let me add in the United States, their currency is the dollar, oops, their capital is Washington DC, and they are in the continent of North America, so it's a different continent, which <clears throat> brings me to my point about filtering. So much like a Excel table, a Notion table, you can run various filters, so I could say I want the continent to be only Europe. And it will show me those rows, which is cool. You can also do the same, but have like multiple views of this table essentially. So if I go and create another table below in this document or another document, I could say use existing tag, click geography YouTube, which is the tag we had. It will pull in all the same information, amazing. And then I could apply my filter to Europe and cool, you have two different views of the same underlying table, 
which could be useful if you had a huge deck of information, but let's say you wanted to study for an exam or specifically focus on the Europe continent, then this is how you could enable it. So there's two ways you can then just study this subset of information that I know of so far. Um, one is you can zoom into this table and then you'll see I want to study it and it's only going to show me the European countries. You'll see it, it was uh, less flashcards than the total number. The second possible way, which I, I don't think either of these are perfect, but you could basically um, create a new document underneath, say European only, do a table, use the existing tag, like I said, apply your filter to Europe. And then if you go to your flashcard home, then you will see that sub or child document of European only, and you can practice that specific deck. So you can imagine doing the same thing for uh, North America, Asia, and so on. And you can apply that to the same concept of like Spanish if you want to just learn verbs or you want to just learn the colors. That is what the filtering and applying different views of a table can enable, which I think is cool. It's not the cleanest way in my opinion, but it works and hopefully that could help you. So I'm gonna stop there. So that's the end of this beginner video to tables in Revnote. I think they're awesome. I think they will really help people study and organize their flashcards. It's a real big improvement. But stick around for the next video from me, hopefully within the next two weeks, where I'll talk about an extension of the tables in Remnote so you can get them working really effectively with taking class or lecture based notes. I think it'll be really powerful for those returning to school or university. So stick around for that one. But until then, get playing with tables. Let me know what you think. If you have any questions, I'm still learning a lot about it. It's a fairly new update. I find the Remnote Discord is super helpful. They help me out a lot. Um, so jump on there if you need it or ask me questions. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one.